Time to talk about collaborative projects, both synchronous and asynchronous. Remember the project codes we learned to both generate and share during the basics level? Well, now we're going to take a look at how these codes can be used to have students taking part in a collaborative project all at once or at different times. So we're going to start with synchronous collaboration. And as you can see here, I have this simple project prepared about the solar system. We can imagine that it's a kind of homework assignment for our students to, to mark the planets. And um, what we're going to start by doing is inviting the other participants to the canvas. Um, so what Isabel showed you in the previous level, and we're then going to expand on that a little bit. But we start in the same place, so I'm going to tap invite right here. And as you can see, my project is currently transforming into a cloud project. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap share and I'm going to use airdrop to send this code to my classmate. So let's do that right now. And there it goes. And what we're both going to do now, once I tap start, is enter the project and work on it together. Okay, and now here we are in this project together, me and my classmate Alicia, and we're going to be working on this project together. What I'm going to do is unmute my microphone so that we can communicate in real time as we do this assignment. So, hi there, Alicia, how are you today? Hello, Anastasia, I'm fine, thanks. Great, are you ready to do this? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so we have to name the planets, but I don't really remember what order they come in, do you? Uh, unfortunately, I can't remember either. So maybe you can take it somehow. Exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the Add Media icon over here, and I'm going to open up a live browser right here and explain everything. I used Wikipedia, but it could be any website that you want to get any information that you need. And it looks like this is going to solve my problem quite nicely. So I'm just going to shrink it down and put it here so that uh, my classmate Alicia can use it. Can you see it properly? Yes, I can. Fantastic. Do you think you could mark the planets then? Yes, no problem. Great. Meanwhile, I think I'll also add some clip art just so that it's not just her doing all of the work. Oh, that's cute. So I'll add this. And maybe I'll add two so they're not lonely. So one of them is Alicia and the other one is me. Good job. Thank you so much. It looks Thank like we you. got this done, huh? Yes, yes, we do this. <laughs> and that's what live synchronous collaboration looks like in Explain Everything. So that was synchronous collaboration. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about asynchronous collaboration, or specifically what we call persistent asynchronous collaboration. I know that sounds like a lot, but what that really means is that different people can contribute to a project at different times, not necessarily all at the same time, because it's not always convenient for larger groups of people to all be on the canvas at once. So they can all contribute to the same project, and the changes that they make to the project will still be available to the people who enter it, and they can build on them, add on to them, etc. You can see how this would be useful for, as I said, larger projects with larger amounts of participants with a deadline further off in time and not necessarily live, um, you know, live class group work. So right here, I have this mind map of Leonardo da Vinci. And what I'm going to start off by doing is, of course, transform my local project into a cloud project. So that will take just one moment. And here we are. And now I'm just going to share the code with my, um, with my classmate. So I'm going to airdrop that right now. And there it is. I'm just going to send my classmate the code. There it goes. And it's done. And when I tap start, of course, my local project becomes a cloud project that other people can join. So as you can see, I'm currently in this project by myself because I had time to work on this project now and my classmate did not. So what should I do here? I mean, it is Leonardo da Vinci. There's no lesson about Leonardo da Vinci without mentioning the Mona Lisa. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here where it says painting. And I'm going to add a picture of the Mona Lisa. There she is, smiling as ever. I'm just going to shrink that down and put it right here. 
And now what you'll see happens is when I leave the project and my classmate enters the project, they will see my changes and they can add something onto them, as I mentioned. And that's what persistent collaboration really is about. So let me just leave that right now. Okay, so now my classmate is entering the project after I've already left. And as you can see right here, the changes that I added to the project are there. And she can now expand on them. So she's decided to go to a different part of the project where it talks about where Leonardo da Vinci was from. Using our integration with Unsplash is a super easy way to have access to lots of beautiful photos so just a picture of Italy would be fine. And we have lots of beautiful pictures of Italy to choose from. The Colosseum. Perfect. Okay, and if we just move it down to where Leonardo da Vinci comes from, double tap to straighten, and we're home. And now, if my classmate leaves this project and I re-enter it, you'll be able to see that I see her changes and I can continue expanding on her work. And now back to me. So I'm going to re-enter this project once again. Here we go. And as you can see, the changes that my classmate added are visible. And I can continue adding to this project however I like. Of course, this is just a small scale example on a relatively simple project, but as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm sure you can see how this would be useful for much larger groups and much more complex projects.